Okay, so this is the first video for food and health for IB Geography and the syllabus um, statement is global patterns in food and nutrition indicators including the food security index, the hunger index, calories per person slash per capita and indicators of malnutrition. So I'm just going to go through each of the different indicators and like show what they are and evaluate them and then show the global trends okay so firstly the global food security index is defined okay well the definition of food security itself is a state of having reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable and nutritious food the components that it takes into account are the quality and safety of the food so that means the diet diversification protein quality and food safety and then there's the affordability, so the percentage of household expenditure on the food, the percentage of population below the global poverty line, import tariffs and farmers financing. And then finally, the availability, so the supply sufficiency of the food. So the advantages of this measure is that it takes into account different components. It's a composite indicator and it can be used to compare. Um, it can be compared over time. However, the cons are that the data collection might be inaccurate and it might not represent the country accurately as it's just an average and it can be difficult to measure some of the components as there are quite a lot and there is there's also a need to take into account costs in different nations um, because of inflation and different exchange rates so globally the trend um, can be seen here so the countries that tend to score quite low which low means worse uh, tend to be centralized around Africa as you can see and some are around Asia as well as a bit of South America um, and then the countries with very high scores are kind of Australia, Europe, um, North America and then now we're going to look at the global hunger index so the Global Hunger Index measures and tracks hunger globally by region annually and it takes into account four components which is undernourishment, so not getting enough nutrition, child wasting which is when um, a child's weight is too low for their height, child stunting oops, which is when the child's height is too low for their weight and then finally child mortality which is the number, the deaths per 1000. Um, children under the age of five normally per year and this is basically on a 100 point scale with zero being the best and 100 being the worst and below 10 is considered low um like a low hunger index and then above 50 is like extremely un ex extremely <laughs> extremely and extremely alarming Okay, so the pros of the Global Hunger Index is it has different components like the um, Global Food Security Index. It's like a composite indicator, so you're not just measuring one thing, you're measuring different factors, and that's like much more kind of robust than just like a singular measure of one, of like child mortality, for example. Then the cons, however, are that it can be difficult to collect the data. Not all countries have data, so comparison is difficult, and it also generalizes the data as it is generally just an average it might not represent the very entire population also it does kind of tend to focus on child factors so again it's like there might be some instances of adult hunger um, that aren't taken into account so globally this is the trend um, it shows us that so the alarming rates are these kind of orange ones so centralized in Africa and kind of Middle Eastern areas and then the countries that are like um, low on the global hung hunger index are around South America, um, kind of I guess Northern Asia but also most of Asia is like quite moderate um, and this kind of part of um, Western, Southwestern-ish Asia is like actually quite is on like the serious um scale and then we don't have the data for europe or north america really or australia so um i can't really comment on that okay oh and that's another thing so like from this not all countries have data
Okay, so now we're going to look at calories per capita. So the definition of calories per capita is the amount of food in calories per person. The world average is 2,700 calories per capita. Um, the pros are that it gives a quantitative amount of calories. So it's like a good way of measuring it. You get like a definite number that you can compare across countries. Um, however, it does not show the composition of the diet. So like different amounts of protein, fats, sugars, um, nutrient intake and it's also just per person so it's just an average so somewhere like with a large population could show a quite um, low calorie per capita value um, that might not be an accurate representation or food um, can be distributed amongst different people so having an average isn't necessarily very accurate in representing the data it also does not show disparities between demographic groups and, like I just mentioned, kind of, um, or also between women and men, children and the elderly, and it can also be hard to measure. So globally, the daily, daily per capita caloric supply um, is highest in kind of North America, Europe, um, some parts of South America, Australia, New Zealand, um, and it's very low kind of in Central Africa, um some areas of kind of western asia southern asia southwestern asia and some parts of um, south america as well okay now we're going to look at indicators of malnutrition so undernutrition is the proportion of undernourished people as a percentage of the population whereas overnutrition is represented by the proportion of undernourished people as a percentage of the population and basically in overnutrition the intake of nutrients are oversupplied so these are both um, like incidents of malnutrition just one is under and one's over okay so this is a map showing the share of the population that's undernourished so you see that it's fairly concentrated in African countries but also in a lot of Asian countries Middle Eastern countries um, and a little like few parts of South America and then the kind of places with the least undernourished is North America, Europe, Northern Asia or well, kind of Russia, Australia and Brazil and then we have overnutrition the largest um, kind of proportions of overnutrition tend to be in North America and strangely the Middle East and Northern Africa which would kind of go against this to an extent um, but of course the data could be from different well this is 2016 and this is 2014 so that might be why um, but yeah 